What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we got a strong bounce off support across the board in the indices. Are we getting ready for that next leg higher? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. Thanks again for smashing that like button and helping these videos reach 2,000 likes. Please don't forget to smash that like button. All right, today in SPY, we were up 1.41% as we are now getting more risk on because SPY is back over 416 and back over our 20 simple moving average. So we do want to be more risk on while SPY is above this level at 416, which means we want to get more risk off if SPY does indeed break back down below that level. So as I always tell you, make sure you are managing your risk, which means if SPY starts breaking down below that level, you instantly need to get risk off. And then you need to wait until price action tells us the next move in the market. But without a doubt, right now, price action is looking a lot more bullish. And as you can tell, we did see an increase in volume today. So an increase in volume as we slice through two resistance levels is definitely going to be an extremely bullish day. And as you could tell, the candle did close at the high of the day. Now, the obvious elephant in the room is that we did not yet close the gap at SPY 421. And we will want to see the bulls slicing through that gap because the bears do not want that gap to get filled. So for that reason, use SPY 421 as resistance, which is also our data the signal level that we had to break through to tell us we're going into the bull market. So more than likely, we've completed the drawdown and we did not reach the average drawdown, as you can tell, which was SPY 406. So whether or not we actually reach the average, nobody knows for sure. But as you know, with averages, we can go higher or lower. There's no guarantee we had to get to that level. So there is a real possibility we could be ready for that next leg higher right now. Now, keep in mind, nothing goes in a straight line. And even though we are expecting SPY to start trending up towards 435, it could be a very volatile ride on the way there. And we could get many ups and downs and continue to climb higher and still reach that target by early to mid September. So it's really as simple as staying bullish as long as SPY is above 416 because we do have more upside price targets and we do have the bull trend of higher highs and higher lows. So we will want to be bullish while SPY is above support. If we get that breakout above 421, that will become your risk level and you just wanna to continue to raise your risk level each and every day. That way, if the market turns against you, you are controlling your risk and you can lock in those profits. So watch that gap close at 421 and the downside support at 416. And remember, if we lose 416, look for a retest of 412 or the support at 408. In the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we are up 1.77%. So we see a very strong bounce off that support at 314, which is exactly the support level we were seeing the falling knife losing momentum as buyers were stepping in at support. So this is the definition of following price action. We saw the momentum dying off because the size of the candle body started to shrink down. And then we started to get green candle bodies off support, which told us buyers were stepping in. And today we see a continuation of the buying. There's no magic here. We are simply following price action and letting price action do all the talking. And a bounce and hold of support is always going to be bullish. On the triple Qs, you want to be risk on while we're above 314 and 317. So you can use either of those as your risk level. And then we want to see the bullish breakout on a close back over the gap above 322. So look for strong resistance at 322, which means if we cannot break above 322, that will be more bearish than bullish, even though we are risk on above support we do want to look for strong rejections from resistance levels. So watch that resistance very closely. And if we can clear 322, it is very likely the triple Qs are going to start marching higher towards 339 to battle the bear that is just licking his lips, waiting for the bulls to come battle him at that level. Keep in mind, the bear has not yet left this market, but the bulls are in control in the short term because they have this very bullish market structure and they're going to remain bullish as long as the market structure remains. The bear's goal is going to be drive the bulls out of this market by slicing through support. That is why you will want to get a lot more risk off if the triple Qs lose this support level at 314 and the next leg lower will be at 307.5. In the Dow Jones, we were up 1% and today we saw the Dow Jones also getting two bullish breakouts with the close back over the 20 simple moving average and back over that resistance at 333. The next likely price target will be the gap fill at 336. And if we continue to march higher above the gap, that's going to be incredibly bullish for the next gap fill at 339 and a retest of the high right around 342. It's very likely if the Dow Jones gets over 336 that we will start marching higher to close the gap at 347. So you do want to stay incredibly bullish in the Dow Jones as long as we're above the 330s. 
Below 330 to 329, you have to get more risk off because we're likely coming back down to 324. In the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 1.55%. And again, a nice bullish bounce off the support level at 191. And we're back over the 20 simple moving average. And we did fill the gap above today, which was just below 195. The next resistance in the small caps will be 196 and then a retest of the high at 201 with the upside price targets of the higher high up there at 205 and then 207. You're getting more risk off if we break below 191 or you could use the risk level at 193. And if we break that support, you're looking for a retest of 184.5. On the RK ETF, we are up 2.88% as RK is bouncing off 43 and very likely trying to close the gap at 47. But do keep in mind below 47, it is bearish. So there is a very good possibility bears are going to short it down once it reaches 47 and then it's going to try to make another lower low. So you're staying risk off below 47 unless you're playing the gap fill. And then if we get rejected from 47, look for a retest of 43. If we get the bull breakout above 47, you still have strong resistance at 49 and the support trend line breakdown, which is going to be right around 50. On the VIX, we were crushing down 4.56% as the VIX is now extremely close to filling the gap below, which is likely going to give us just enough energy to fully close the gap in SPY and the triple Qs. Once that gap fills, if we continue to see the VIX crush below 20, that's your sign to get more risk on and to stay bullish. But if we close the gap and bounce back over 24, that's going to be an instant sign to get more risk off. In Bitcoin, we're currently up about 1% and still banging our head against resistance at 21,600. And the bulls need to break above that level or we could see a retest of the lows at 19,000. If we get the bull breakout, look for resistance at 23,000 and 25,000 and above 25,000, we should get the bull breakout that could end crypto winter and we could start to see Bitcoin in a bull market yet again. Remember, if you're buying Bitcoin at these levels, you're accumulating for the long term because we are still in the bear market. So you need to expect lower highs and lower lows until we get the bullish breakout. Continuing with our big tech hot stocks, we have Amazon going up 2.6% and bouncing off the top of that gap and getting back over that resistance at 136. So 136 is now the support and the risk level for Amazon. Likely upside price targets will be the gap fill at 138 and the 20 simple moving average of resistance at 139. And if we can clear that resistance, look for a retest of 144. Stay bullish as long as we're above 136 and get more risk off if we break below that level. And as you can tell, the Bollinger Bands are starting to squeeze very tightly, so a big move is starting to develop in Amazon stock. On Microsoft, we were up 1.11% and Microsoft had a very strong bounce off support right to the penny right there, right around 274.6. And we did close near the high of the day. If this bounce can hold, the next likely upside price targets will be 283.8 and the full gap close right around 286. And if we continue to march higher from there, Microsoft is going to be looking incredibly bullish. We're getting risk off below 274 for a retest of 270. And if we break that support, it's going to be extremely bearish because we do not want to see Microsoft coming back down to 267 or we're going to have to say it no longer looks very bullish. On Nvidia stock, we had a very bullish day after earnings with a high volume buying day going up 4% and slicing right through that gap close but we are still below resistance at 181. So the bulls will want to get over that level as soon as tomorrow to scare away the bears. Even though this was a very bullish day of bounce off that support at 170, is it still looking like a lower high until we can break back over that 20 simple moving average and start to regain that bull trend. So you're getting more risk on above 182 because you do not want to be getting bullish right at resistance. So wait for that bullish breakout. And if we do get the rejection from here, look for a retest of support at 170 and then 165. On Tesla stock, we had the stock split today, so my chart got completely obliterated by the 3 to 1 split, but I do have the new levels drawn on the chart, and Tesla did go down 0.35% today and did close just barely below the 20 simple moving average, but you can very clearly see that Tesla is just consolidating in a bull flag, which was our preferred scenario, but I am telling you we are going to see this thing breaking out very soon. The likely breakout is going to be to the upside because we do have the bull trend, and that is going to require a break above the 300s, clearing the level at 311, with the upside price target just below 337. So do keep that in mind that if we get the bullish breakout, it is going to be a very quick trip to 336. Now you have to be careful in any consolidation wedge, there's always the chance that it could break to the downside. So you're getting risk off if we break below 282, because we could be coming all the way back down to 258 or closing the gap at 250. 
On Apple stock, we were up 1.49% and Apple continues to bounce off the 20 simple moving average and is very close to filling the gap to the upside, which is just below 172. Above that gap fill, we can retest the resistance right around 174 and you're staying risk on in Apple as long as we're above 166. Below 166, you're getting risk off for a retest of 163 and a gap fill at 157. On the financial sector, we were up 1.55%, closing back over the 20 simple moving average and very close to closing the gap above and over overall still in a bull trend. The industrials were up 1.53%, closing back over the 20 simple moving average, closing the gap above, and still in a strong bull trend. The healthcare sector was up 1.1%, still closing below the 20 simple moving average, but overall still looks like a bullish inverse head and shoulders, so it will be a very impulsive breakout once we do break out above 134. The energy sector was up 0.77% today, coming directly to our price target and failing to close above that level. So respect that resistance and don't get bullish until we can close above it. And then you can look for the gap fill above right around 88. You're staying bullish as long as we're above 79, but do not forget that we have a gap to fill, which is right around that support level. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, do not be afraid to buy at support, just manage your risk around the risk levels I'm giving you. And remember that overall, we have a bullish market structure of higher lows and higher highs, and we do have the benefit of the 100% successful backtest that tells us the bottom is in and the bear market is over. Whether or not you believe in that backtest is a completely different story, but facts are facts and that backtest tells us that we are indeed going back into a bull market and each and every day we continue to see price action and trend agreeing with that backtest. So try to stay objective and follow price action and I do understand a lot of you are nervous about this market and that is why you just simply need to manage your risk around these support and risk levels and make sure that you're just coming to the market each and every day with an open mind and willing to accept what the chart is telling us. Remember on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm giving you all of my intraday updates and analysis and helping you become a better price action trader. So if you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. I also have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. If you're interested in learning more about Bank or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you are crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.